Thomas Aquinas was one of the most important theologians and philosophers in the history of Christianity. He is one of those who is considered a doctor of the church within the Catholic Church. Thomas was born in 1225 and he died in 1274. He joined the Dominican order and was ordained a priest. He taught at the universities of Cologne and Paris and held numerous other posts as a theologian, philosopher, and biblical scholar. After 1265, he began to write the Summa Theologiae, or Theologica, a summary of Christian theology intended for what he called beginning students. So why am I giving you a lecture on Thomas Aquinas and the Ten Commandments? After all, Thomas Aquinas lived long after the Ten Commandments were given at Sinai. The reasons are this. In, in the Summa, Aquinas wrote extensively on justice. The format of the Summa is divided by what he calls disputed questions. He devotes 66 questions to issues relating to justice, which in the ancient and medieval worlds was considered one of the most important of the virtues. Now, he was influenced by the work of classical philosophers, whose ideas were actually much closer to the Bible than modern views are, but most prominently by the scriptures. Most of what he says can be found in scripture, but he sets it out in great detail and makes clear what the issues are, quite systematically. Using his work as a lens, we can look at the Ten Commandments and notice things we might otherwise miss. I include for you here some references. One is to the sections in his Summa Theologica where he talks about justice and also some YouTube videos which very succinctly in less than 10 minutes each his views are discussed both on justice and what are called the potential parts of justice. The links are also provided in Canvas. For Aquinas the human person is by nature a social and political animal. The human person always and everywhere finds him or herself as part of some society. There is no time in someone's life in which they appear as an isolated or mere individual. This is in accord with biblical anthropology and at odds with much modern political theory. In the 16th to 18th centuries, theorists such as Thomas Hobbes, John Locke, and Jean-Jacques Rousseau started with the free, unattached person who must give up some freedom in order to participate in society. By contrast, for Aquinas, human life is inherently and inescapably relational. Because humans are relational, Every act must be guided by the moral virtues, justice, fortitude, and temperance. Justice is the virtue that establish us, establishes us in right relation with others. Justice is defined as the perpetual and constant will to render each one their due. The concern of justice is not with the self, but with the other. So, what is due to another? Some claims are established by nature, such as the right to life, the right to a livelihood that makes it possible to receive nourishment and other goods that support life, and the right to bring children into the world through marriage, care for them, and educate them. It is also our nature to seek what we perceive to be good and to seek the truth however these inclinations may be twisted by sin. 
Aquinas describes three types of justice. There is general or legal justice, what an individual owes to the political community. There is distributive justice, what the political community owes to the individual. And commutative justice, what an individual owes to another individual. All of the Ten Commandments presuppose living in society. Some of them involve commutative justice and deal with those rights or claims that are based on the nature of what it means to be human. The command, you shall not kill, addresses the natural right to life. You shall not steal, and you shall not cover your covet your neighbor's house or his female or male servant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor, addresses the right to have access to those goods which sustain life. You shall not commit adultery, and you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, addresses the right to marry and have children by that marriage. Committing adultery threatens the marriage bond and the integrity of the family. You shall not bear false witness also has the potential to threaten someone's life and livelihood. This could happen in a trial in which one accused another of a crime that would lead to that person being either killed or made to pay restitution. It could also happen by spreading false rumors about a person's character or actions. This commandment also reflects the need for what is true in order to make society work. Following those commandments, then, leads to an order in which giving the other his or her due leads to a certain kind of equality. However, there are those to whom we owe more than can be repaid. In those cases, we practice the virtues of veneration, religion, piety, and observance. In his words, religion, which refers to the interior and exterior acts of worship, renders God his due. We owe our life to God, and therefore we offer our worship and praise because of his great goodness. Piety renders parents and country their due. After God, parents and country have given us an abundance of riches that we could not have provided for ourselves. While we may disagree with our parents or our country, we cannot opt out from the love and gratitude we owe them. Observance or respect gives to our superiors what is due to them. These superiors would be people like a boss or an employer or the leader of an organization to which one belongs. In the Ten Commandments, religion is expressed in the command, You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. All of these are ways of honoring and worshiping God and putting him first in the ordering of one's life. Piety is shown in the commandment, to honor your father and your mother. By extension, this can be applied to all those who take part in bringing us up and caring for us. There is, of course, much more to justice than this very brief description and comparison. There are the questions about what to do when justice fails, and we see this in much of the text of Exodus through Deuteronomy as well as in the prophets. Aquinas addresses this in his questions on vindication. What does one do when a wrong has been committed? How is restoration brought about? How is the social order renewed so that it is good and healthy? I invite you to listen to the videos on justice that I posted, although it is not required. At some point in your life, you might also be brave and tackle all of the 66 questions on justice that Aquinas sets out.